It's for good reason that Australia is sometimes referred to as the quarry of the world. It's the largest producer of lead and diamonds, the biggest exporter of coal, and the second main source of uranium, zinc and nickel. The mining sector employs some 320,000 workers and it's contributed $360 billion to the Australian economy over the past 20 years. But the resources boom has just come to a shuddering end as the contagion of the global financial crisis has reached this far-flung corner of the world. In the mining fields of Western Australia, a skeletal structure which used to help form the backbone of the nation's roaring economy. This is the Ravensthorpe Nickel Mine, opened last year by the mining giant BHP Billiton. But it's about to become a very expensive relic of Australia's one-time resources boom. The company decided to shut it down, its shock response to the global economic downturn. The slowdown in China has contributed to a collapse in commodities prices. A tonne of nickel now sells for about a fifth of what it did two years ago. So BHP Billiton has decided to pull the plug just eight months after this mine's official opening. After being told to gather for a safety meeting, 1,850 mining workers and contractors were told they'd lose their jobs. The projected lifespan of the mine was at least 25 years, but many of the contractors were back in the state capital, Perth, by lunchtime. Yes, yeah, indicative of the severity of the downturn and how quickly it came on. But it's the same old story. What goes up quickly can come down quickly. And gravity's a bit like that. It was great news. It was, it was a, a good news story. The, for the first time in a long time, BHP Billiton investing in a community um, and I did think it was going to be a change in attitude from the bulk of the companies, but then literally a few months later, gone, um, and a couple of hundred families' lives destroyed in the process. Work in the mine, live by the sea, was the snappy slogan which drew hundreds of miners and their families to Hope Town, the unfortunate name for this wind buffeted community on the southern shoreline of Western Australia. Workers came from all over the world to live in these newly built villages and suburbs. There were tennis courts, barbecue pits and a swimming pool. All the trappings of the Australian good life. But now these communities are emptying out. Since the closure of the mine was announced in January, more than a thousand people have left. For Rick Besso, the local businessman who built these homes, it's ruinous. It, it's almost like losing your family, you know, I've put a lot of my life, a lot of my thoughts, a lot of work into this and to see it taken away after short, such a short period of time is just, it's heartbreaking, it's devastating. There's no real words to be able to describe something like that, you know, uh, we've put in a lot of effort, a lot of work, we've made this right, it works and now it's gone. It, it's really heartbreaking. Throughout the town are the signs of its happy transformation. Wind turbines were constructed to provide electricity for the expanded community. A new school was built for the children of the mine workers. But though it started the academic year with over 200 pupils, it will end it with less than 50. Then there are those dream luxury homes, which nobody wants to live in anymore. People are trying to sell up and flee but property prices have slumped by up to 50%. In this age of toxic assets, these are toxic suburbs. They reek of negative equity. I mean, what's going to happen to this community? We don't know. We don't know. The community is just going to empty itself out. People here don't know what they're going to do, where they're going to go. Uh, we're not sure what's going to happen next. It's just, it's just, it's miserable. There's no other way of saying it. It's miserable. People are desperate. People are concerned. People are frightened. They don't know what's happening. There is no future. There's been nothing mapped out for them. There's been nothing they can grab hold of. There's just an emptiness here. It's an emptiness that's very hard to explain. But there is nothing here for the people. Not at this point in time, and certainly nothing in the near future. 
50 kilometers inland is the town of Ravensthorpe, a rural community that was also totally dependent on the mine. Like Hope Town, it's in danger of becoming a ghost town. Halfway up the main street is the town's new pharmacy. It was set up by Ibrahim al an Iraqi-born pharmacist who came here from Perth. Its shelves are now half empty. There's no point in replenishing his stock. Because we've had a um, continuous boom over the last so many years, especially in the resource industry, we thought this was no, never going to end. Um, and unfortunately, it has caught up with Australia. In, in this little town, for example, we never thought that the mine site would close. We thought that because they've claimed it would be here for 25 years, and we thought it would be. But unfortunately, it's just gone. They decided to close it, and then um, all of a sudden the mine site's gone. So now he's left with only a small trickle of customers. The dream that brought him here is in tatters. Having had hopes about the mine site being here for a long time, workforce um, staying in, in town and not fly and fly out, we thought that was the jackpot. We hit the jackpot there. But unfortunately, um, with the mine closure, the miners have gone to find jobs somewhere else. We're here with a 60% with loss in our revenue. And we don't know what the future holds for us. You can't go on? Very hard to say right now, but it's looking like that. Looks like we might even have to close in the next few months. But only time will tell. In the hardware store over the road, Glenn Scott thought he was set up for the rest of his working life. He'd invested heavily in his new business, but had seen his turnover slump by 70%. We had a five-year plan to get back our investment, and um, we're not going to get that investment back at all. Um, so I'll go and work somewhere else, because I can make more with myself working than what I can in running this business. Which also means uh, in a community that there are very few individuals, uh, my partner and my child will go out of this community as well if I go and get work, because um, they'll go where I go. What's going to happen to this town? Um, I think it'll be a lot like a lot of rural towns that are around. Um, they slowly um, start to decline, they, they die off. Um, this town's been here for years and years, from when I was a child I can remember this town. Um, but uh, the market um, that was here prior to BHP is now totally different. So for businesses to survive you need people and um, it doesn't look real um, promising from the people front. These communities have been through the cycle of boom and bust before, when the gold mines shut in the 1930s. But this time there's little to fall back on. The local economy was totally reconfigured as soon as BHP Billiton announced its plans for the mine. Property prices rose, so too did rents, forcing many low-income and elderly people out of the area. Many farmers sold their land to the company, killing off parts of the agricultural sector. These communities then became wholly dependent on BHP Billiton and its mine. And now there's nothing to take its place. The president of the local shire is Brenda Tilbrook. Up until the closure of the Ravensthorpe mine, she presided over Australia's fastest growing rural community. Now it's one of the fastest shrinking. So she's turned the media training that she received from BHP Billiton back on the mining giant itself. The company declined our request for an interview. Oh, I've said everything to them. I've told them that. I've told them that they have a moral responsibility to our community, but they don't really want to face up to that. You know, they are BHP, the biggest mining company in the world, and they're very powerful. It's a David and Goliath fight. Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia's second oldest city and the largest coal exporting harbour in the world. Coal has been shipped from here since the beginning of the 1830s. The port is vital not only for the local economy,
but Australia's national wealth. It's the home of the world's biggest coal export facility. Last year it processed over 90 million tons. Coal is brought by train from the mines of the Hunter Valley, further inland, and then readied for export. It's a never-ending process, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's mainly thermal coal, the type used for power generation. No wonder Australia is sometimes called the Saudi Arabia of coal. It's the country's most valuable export commodity.